secretary, yes. Or good little nurse, housewife, attorney, writer, housewife, singer. die in that fall on Mount Everest, and uh, he wasn't disabled as the doctors predicted. He overcame his injuries and uh, learned to walk again and carried out his responsibilities where any other man would have stopped. Although he had numerous sports magazines to publish and an, an arduous program of physical therapy to follow, he returned to his volunteer position with United Charities, helping us not only meet but exceed our goals. Mr. Graham Harris, you've helped make this Thanksgiving season our best in years. So, it is my pleasure to thank you by naming you United Charities Man of the Year. Thank you, son. <laughs> to talk. Police at this hour? What about? Real bad trouble with one of your employees. Listen, I left work early because I wasn't feeling so well. I... Do we talk or do I get a warrant? <sighs> so I guess the best advice I can give is if you're in a wheelchair, Never pick a fight with a man who has the words born to die tattooed on his forehead. I... 
I'd like to mention some people who I'd give an award if I could. First, well, I... How do I know you're really a cop? <laughs> Paranoia. The life's blood of New York. Detective Franklin Dwight Bollinger? Named after Eisenhower and Roosevelt. My folks hoped I'd be a politician. Parents, huh? What's this all about? It's about blood. You're no cop. <laughs> And finally, there's one person who I would especially like to thank. Connie Weaver. During three bad years, she stood by me. She helped me. Everything's probably okay. Just some of that banquet chicken we all ate. <laughs> um, if you'll just shift down the hall. Grant, is it happening again? Yes. The police know him, Connie. His name's Dwight. The son of a bitch's name is Dwight. And he just kept stabbing her. Who is she? Edna. Maybe Edna Singer. We've got to call Produsky. Maybe it's not too late to save her. No. She's already gone. How is that? Well, excuse me. Marty, it's Connie Weaver. I have to find Produsky. He's out in the field, Connie. He looks like that psycho killer again. Oh, you want to give me that address? Edna Singer. No, nope, no. Nope. Her name was Edna Murray, not Singer, but she worked as a singer. So you were close. Nice trick. You know, we'd never been on it so fast, except a friend came to visit, found the doors open. Sign, of course, yeah. Can get anything from this? Try. Poetry from Blake. Not this time. We already checked Bartlett's. It's from Nietzsche, Hitler's favorite philosopher. Man is a rope between the animal and the superman, a rope over an abyss. What's a killer mean by it? You're the psychic. You tell me. 
You're the forensic psychologist, aren't you telling? This guy's different. Sometimes I think he leaves these things just to mock us. Murder, then a ritual meal. The, the first four times, he, the guy left a mess. Uh, butter smears and crumbs, and then the fifth and sixth time, he, he's like Miss Manners. Made us suspicious, so we pulled the garbage disposal, scraped the drain. Sure enough, he'd thrown the food away. He hadn't eaten that time. That's weird. Why would he fake it sometime? Can I touch the apple? Yeah, sure. We, we already dusted. Graham thinks that the police might know this guy. Lint, <laughs> so does your crystal ball tell us how we uh, know this guy? We already checked that. Previously arrested sex offenders. If sex is either. not what turns this guy on. It's something else. Maybe violence. I'm going to wander around. You know, I never knew this guy very well, but didn't he used to be an outgoing, amusing guy? He will be again. He just needs time. Is he still afraid of heights? Wouldn't you be after a fall like that? I hear you're a climber, is that true? No, I'm no climber, Ira. I just learned a little to see why Graham liked it so much. anything officer well nothing so far but uh, you never know hey you're the psychic prime flashed your picture on the news last night prime genghis khan with a journalism degree <laughs> listen don't worry about prime nothing we do ever pleases him so uh you think you'll nail the butcher have you seen him yet with your uh what do you call it your inner eye I've seen him, but not his face. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, you see his body type, maybe how tall he is, his hair color? Nothing like that. The police might know him. The name's Dwight. Yeah? You've seen that much already? You know, personally, I believe in psychics. A lot of guys in the department, they think you're a joke, but not me. You're saying a man becomes a psychic from a bump on the head. Well, what do you think triggered it, a hangman? I don't think anything triggered it. Ira, what is your point? He's always been strong, never afraid of anything. Suddenly, he's afraid of heights. He's ashamed. He, he needs to find a reason to feel good about himself. Special. So he pretends to be a psychic? Make a lousy psychologist. All right. First, Graham did not put himself in this case. I dragged him. Connie, I just don't think it's real. Fine, you're a skeptic. But he described the apartment of that woman last week before you found her body. And now Edna Singer, Edna Moray, the singer. Now, I find that pretty convincing. Something wrong? Did you find anything? No. I know it's the day before a holiday, but the commissioner wondered if you could drop by in the morning. I've got a deadline. Oh, well, if you have a deadline. No, no, that's <laughs> fine. We'll be there. I appreciate it. Anthony Prime. How'd he get here so fast? Well, let's just try to avoid him. Let him through. Good evening. Just a few short hours ago, the butcher struck again. He came here tonight 
to this apartment house where... Ladies and gentlemen, this is an unexpected development. The man coming through the door right now is Graham Harris, the psychic who's been working with the police. Mr. Harris, I wonder if I could ask you just a few questions. Channel 7 News, live on the air. The people would like to know what, if anything, you have been able to contribute to this investigation. I have no comment. You talk to the department's information officer. Do you honestly feel, Mr. Harris, that psychic powers are a substitute for traditional police procedures? It's no substitute. The police have worked very hard on this. You know, some people in New York like to know what's in it for you. It's simply a matter of publicity for your magazines. Why don't you get a job you suited for? I hear professional wrestling needs announcers. Ever notice how Produsky's always picking at Lent, cleaning things? Man's got a real neatness finish. Well, a neat, orderly mind is part of what makes him such a good detective. Yeah, well, he thinks I'm even less real than one of those mind-reading magicians from Vegas. Uh -huh. Yeah, he does seem to have a subconscious aversion. Oh, God, don't analyze him. Why is it every time someone behaves out of character, you try and explain it? That's what I do. Well, not everything in life can be explained. I mean, a lot of crap just happens. There's no meaning to it. Man, people's attitudes don't just happen. They're from oh, my just years get off it, would you? I don't care about Produsky. I don't care why Produsky mistrusts me. And this butcher, you could spend a century inside of his head, and you're never going to be able to explain it. I know, honey, but maybe you feel... You don't understand. I've got no control over it. Look... I've done everything that you've asked me to do. I've tried to help. But I'm beginning to feel like a fool. So what good's the gift if I can't turn it on and off? Just the two of us. That sounds good. Where do you want to go? Hmm. I don't know. Where do you want to go? Hawaii. Ooh, that sounds nice. God, Connie, it's so hard to get a fix on this guy. There's so much violence. Look, each time I have one of these visions, it's like I'm right there. I, mean, I felt that woman's terror, her desperation. I just don't want to spend the rest of my life seeing other people die. Did you slice her? Yeah. She died nice and quick. <laughs> Boy, I wished I could have been there with you. You were, Billy, really, in spirit. That's psychic. He knows your middle name. Yeah. I think he's for real. Hard to tell what he's gonna see next, isn't it? Give him a couple of days, he's gonna know your whole name. My name, where we live, what we have for breakfast, our favorite colors, for God's sake. Uh, he's gonna have to die. And quick. Tomorrow at the latest. Well, which one of us kills him? Why don't you do it? I got commitments gonna keep me tied up. <laughs> His woman is good looking. Yeah? Well, why don't you have yourself a double header? Open 
not causing you any problems. No problem. It's just that you won't have anyone to help you out. The city gave all clerks an early holiday. It's Thanksgiving. Oh, don't worry about me. I've been here before. I know my way around. Come on. What is it you're really working on? Drug thing. Nah, I can't tell you anymore if I do the captain and have my butt. Great. Thanks. Come on, let's go. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. Morning. Dust sifts out of these old ceilings like sin off the devil's wings. Thanks for dropping by, Graham. I'll be working till midnight to make up for it. Magazine deadlines aren't flexible. Oh, it doesn't seem right. The boss working the night before a holiday. Connie will keep me company. Yeah, I want to do a little reading up on Blake and Nietzsche. Find out why our man's so interested in them. Wren's nest, what's this? That is the house of the man who gave us the Uncle Remus stories. Joel Chandler Harris, one of my favorite places when I was growing up in Atlanta. You're from Georgia? They do allow a few Jews in Georgia. <laughs> Where's the accent? Well, I moved north when I was 11. Why didn't you have a seat? knife to kill Denda Murray. Can you get anything from it? Well, not always. Sometimes I can get vibrations. Victim's emotions. How did you know that? Because it feels clean. What are you doing, Ira? It's a little test. You passed, I guess. All right, now. These are some of our most violent repeat offenders. I understand some uh, psychics can tell things from photos like this. What about you? I can try. Take your time. You know, we should have done this a week ago, I guess, when the commissioner first uh, told me he wanted you on the case. I will soon know if this is the right one of this one. No, 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 Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? You stay, and uh, take your time. I've got an appointment at the morgue, Edna Murray's autopsy. And detectives don't have to go to those, do they? Uh, no, I, I just like to be thorough. Well, he's an Uncle Remus fan, but he likes autopsies. He's a neatness freak in a messy business, a Jew from Georgia. There's a lot of contradictions. Well, now you're doing it. What? Analyzing people. You still think it's a good idea to hit him in the Nicholas building? Instead of waiting until they're in their own house? They might work all night, never go home. What if he has another vision? She's more than just my middle name. Or yours. No, we can't wait. Sure would be spectacular if we can pull this off, huh? <laughs> Why shouldn't we pull it off? Hmm? We don't make mistakes. We're new men, aren't we? That's right. We are the future. This old world ain't never seen nothing like us. 
So when are you gonna do it? Hmm. Seven, seven thirty. This woman's nice. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have some fun with her and then cut her in front of Harris. His office is on the 40th floor. He's afraid of height, so I'm gonna push him out the window. <laughs> <laughs> going with Blake and Nietzsche. Oh, no funny connections. See, Nietzsche didn't hate women, but he believed that women kept men from greatness. Which would give the butcher an excuse to kill him. Yeah, maybe. Now, Blake loved women, but like Nietzsche, he believed that men had the power to become gods. Well, like a race of supermen. So, maybe getting away with murder might make this guy feel like he's one of Nietzsche's supermen. No, it gives me the creeps. Well, why don't we talk about something more pleasant, like uh, dinner? Mmm, good idea. Where do you want to go? How about that little Chinese place down there? No, on no, you don't. We're not going any further than the galley in the next room. We've got everything we need there. There's a refrigerator, microwave, TV dinner, so set aside for a night like this. You're a workaholic, you know that? Yeah. I don't know how your staff tolerates you. Well, I never work this late. It's a joy reserved for the boss. I'll give you a hint. Very funny. Thank you, but I know my way around a microwave. And besides, I want first look at whatever might be lurking in that refrigerator of yours. situation here. Is anyone working late? Uh, not many the night before Thanksgiving. Uh, Mr. Harris and uh, Miss Weaver on the 40th floor, Otten McDonald on the 20th. What kind of emergency? Could anybody be working late without your knowledge? Uh, not a chance. All but one entrance is locked at 6.30 and uh, no one can come in without signing in here with me. Building maintenance, engineer. Uh, there's no maintenance on a holiday. Uh, uh, the crowd, Schiller, he's the night engineer. He's fixing a heat pump in the basement. And the guard in the monitor room. But maybe you better tell me about this emergency. Terrorist threat. There may be a bomb in this building. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Could have had ground floor offices. Yeah. But that'd be giving up, wouldn't it?
I win. Glass, Billy. This is their Schiller, nicht wahr? Yeah. <laughs> you speak German very well. Well, my grandparents were from the old country. Ah. Who are you? I'm the lightning out of the dark cloud, man. Was? It's Nietzsche. It's who? Peasant. a romantic way to spend a holiday oh, i'm almost in a swoon I mean, when you think about it there's not much difference between diet soda and champagne <laughs> well, they both have bubbles now then it What happened? It's what's going to happen here. I'm going to be shot in the back by the butcher. Elevator one. Which of you is McDonald? He's McDonald. He's McDonald. That's a damn lie. Hey, he's lying. I'm not McDonald. You want him, not me. Well, actually, I'm here for Mr. Ott. I'm McDonald. He's Ott. Guess I'll have to kill you both. Honey, you gotta get out of here. What are you talking about? I saw him shoot me. Only me. So maybe you're in the clear. But as long as you're near me, he could get you too. No, no. Have no dial tone. He 
He's cut all the lines. He's in the building now. Graham, wait! Graham, let's not jump to conclusions. Fine. They don't work now. You want to jump to some conclusions? Graham, this is crazy. First of all, if he wanted to kill you, it would be easier and less risky to do it at home. Look, this guy doesn't care anything about risk. You said yourself that he feels superior to everyone else, super confident. This may appeal to him. Maybe it's the maintenance man. Yeah, not on the holiday weekend. We'll take the stairs down to the street. You can't do 40 floors with your leg. Mr. Harris, is that you? Police, Mr. Harris, we met last night, remember, at Ed Nabore's apartment? Yeah, don't come any closer. The producer, you knew you'd be working late. You wanted me to come by, ask you a few questions. Stay where you are! <laughs> Lieutenant Bollinger, NYPD. What are you so spooked about? Graham, you sense the police might know the killer. What if it's because he's one of them? Stairs. 
think so. It's not a psychology. He thinks he's invincible. I think we'll break right through it. Your shoe. Uh,
soldier, stick your head out. What's the matter? Are you afraid? So damn cute, Harris. We'll see how cute you are with your face shot off. Nobody hurts me. Nobody. I just seems long to come back up here. He's only got two stairwells to monitor. He'll nail us sooner or later. But it's a big building. There's a lot of places to hide. We can only hide in the public places. He's got all night to search those. Not all night. Just until the next shift of guards comes in. It's a holiday. They're 12-hour shifts. Thank God we've got the stuff from the buyer's guide. What are you looking for? This. Graham, the man has got a gun. That's like going up against a tank with a pea shooter. Well, it's got to be something in here. What if you opened the window and shot it down to somebody on the street? They'll never hear us. We're 40 floors up and the wind's blowing. So let's find something heavy enough not to be blown away by the wind and throw that out the window. Fine, we'll kill somebody. Look, by the time we attract anyone's attention, Bollinger will have found us. No, 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 there's another way. We'll go out the window onto the face of the building. Climb down 40 floors? No, just a few floors. We'll break out one of the windows of the locked offices below. Bollinger can't get in there from that corridor, so he won't see how we could. And then we just stay there till morning. Look, even a few floors, this is nuts. I mean, you were never much of a climber, and, and you've been away from it longer than I have. Graham is not going to be a climb, it's a descent. I've retained enough space I to I can't a climb! Back. Connie, I'll joke. Even just a few floors. Graham. If Bollinger finds us, he'll kill you right away. But he's going to have fun with me. Now, we either go out that window or you kill me right here. Because I don't want to die at his hands. Slip off a ledge. This harness will keep you from turning upside down. I'm gonna have you on two lines. If your safety line breaks, I'll have you on a belaying line. Suddenly, this doesn't seem like such a good idea. Put on your gloves. We'll be fine. And no setbacks, just narrow windowsills. Until 45 feet to the 37th floor. That's not so far. Now, well, it may as well be a mile. Now, remember, always keep this locked so your carabiner won't come open accidentally. Now, this is your safety line. It's 50 feet long. If you're
your belaying line breaks, you can't fall any further than that. I'm going to get you down with a standing hip belay. Left hand to guide, right hand to break. Is it coming back to you? I think so. No matter how scared of heights you are, right now I'm twice as scared. Connie, I love you. I love you. They go, Billy. Where the hell do they go? Maybe they went upstairs. Back into their hole.
ever. Come on. Left hand to guide, right to break. Steady in this wind. If we go back outside the building, he's gonna hit us sooner or later. Yeah, well, we can't stay here. The last thing I want to do is more climbing. But he knows where we are and he's on his way. Maybe someone on the street heard the shot. It's too much traffic noise. Besides, the wind would have covered the sound of the shots. going down five floors to the big statue and we don't have a lot of time so i'm gonna let you down a hell of a lot faster i trust you
any minute. Got to get to the other side of the building. If he sees that we're not here, he'll think we've gone inside. How are we going to get from here to there? Grapple over to the other statue, and we'll glide over. Are you serious? Grandma, I'm afraid I can't. So am I. We got reason to be. city's history, but still he walks among us. Maybe the press shouldn't have dubbed him the butcher. He should have been called the invisible man. He seems to enter his victims' homes with the ease of an invisible man. At times he seems to walk among the police, taunting them, and yet they haven't even gotten a glimpse of him. Lock your doors, ladies and gentlemen. The investigation continues, and so do the murders. This is Anthony Prine. Now remember, it's left hand to guide, right hand to break. Connie, it's left hand to guide. It's right hand to break. Now I'll be right behind you. Go on. That's it.
Please, come on. I'm Superman. the security staff either. I knew something was very wrong. I'm afraid I have an apology to make. See, it occurred to me earlier this evening that there might be two butchers. Two? One who stabs savagely, one who cuts almost primly, one who reads Nietzsche, one Blake, one who eats voraciously after a killing, one who can't bear to eat at all. You're saying he's got a partner? If the murders don't stop, then we'll know, won't we? 
Well, I wouldn't worry about it too much if I were you. It's a flashy theory, but it doesn't uh, look too hot when you've had a chance to, to look it through. Uh, I'm afraid this is where the apology comes in. See, I started thinking. If these killers believed they were Nietzsche Superman, then they might enjoy playing risky games to prove their superiority. And what better game than for one of them to get in tight with the police, help him out, supply him with information on the killings that he and his friend were committing while pretending to be a psychic? You suspected me? Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, I'm afraid sometimes I insist on putting people into a neat little box that they don't really necessarily belong in. And you couldn't allow yourself to believe anyone could have genuine psychic power. Didn't fit into my neat little way of thinking. I'm sorry. You actually thought I was the killer. I'm afraid to say that I was in here earlier this evening sneaking around and <laughs> well, trying to find any little mementos of the murders you were committing. I almost sent your kitchen knives to the lab to see if the blades matched the slash patterns of the victims. I can't believe this. Well, if I'd actually found anything, I, I, I would have left it right where it was. I mean, I... I would have gotten a warrant. Graham, I'm sorry. Relax. <laughs> See, even if I still believed in my two-killer theory, I think it'd be a bit much to think the second one would be coming after you tonight. Anthony Prine. Doesn't he ever give up? Do leeches ever let go? I'll let him in. And if I talk to him, he'll leave us alone. Lieutenant, what are you doing here tonight? There must be more to this story than meets the eye. You didn't come home with these folks just to hold their hands, did you? Why don't you come on in, Brian? What do you want? I want your story. What was it like in that building tonight? I mean, how did the two of you manage to... You didn't really think you were going to be able to kill one of us and get away with it, did you? Animals like you? What's the matter? Don't I seem like a killer? You can't analyze me, lady. See, I was born this way. <laughs> I wasn't shaped by psychological trauma. I am the new man. I am the future. And so was Dwight. See, I called him Dwight. Dwight. He called me Billy. That's my name before I had to change it to blend in with the world of big time media and all. Billy. I come up north here to college and I met him. And I knew right off, just like he did, that we was two of a kind. We was just a couple of poor boys on scholarship, but I knew, and Dwight knew, that we was better than anybody else. Anybody else in the whole world. We could sense it, that specialness in each other. And now, because of you, he is dead. Look out! Just get on with living. 